Hello everyone, my name is Haley. Today my partner Marshall and I are going to talk to you about the similarities and differences between the two selling platforms of PetSmart and Chewy.com. First we're going to start off with a discussion about PetSmart. To start, PetSmart is a traditional, department-style brick-and-mortar store that offers an array of pet products and services, as well as the sale of live animals. Founded in 1986 by Jim and Janice Daughtry, PetSmart, formerly known as Pet Food Warehouse, started out as just a pet product department store. However, in the early 90s, PetSmart expanded and began to offer pet services such as grooming and training, as well as a philanthropic outreach to adopt out abandoned pets. The decision to expand its service sector and the inclusion of a charitable subdivision is what would ultimately lead to the great success of PetSmart in the future. One of PetSmart's most notable resources is its superb customer service. This can be seen throughout the products and services that they offer. For instance, PetSmart offers adequate pet care guides that are free for their customers to take. This educates their customers about proper animal care and ensures that all of their animals that they sell are given quality treatment. Next, training and grooming services are always presented in open areas with see-through windows so customers can know that their pets are being treated humanely and are always safe. Lastly, PetSmart refers to its clientele as a community and they treat their customers' pets as if they were part of a family. PetSmart allows their community to bring their pets to shop with them as long as they're on a leash. This presents the idea that the pet is definitely seen as an equal in the family and is part of the PetSmart community. Another resource that PetSmart is known for is its philanthropy and adoption services. For example, when Marshall and I visited the PetSmart store located on Archer, we got the opportunity to experience a rabbit adoption program that took place inside of the store. We are going to a rabbit rescue. We adopt out rabbits after rescuing them from uh, owner surrenders, from hoarding situations, from local animal shelters that are full, um, and also rabbits that have been dumped outside that are not supposed to live in the wild. Um, and then we find homes for them. And we like to use PetSmart as an educational tool and also a resource for helping potential rabbit owners and fosters with understanding rabbit care and um, learning about rabbits in general. As you can see, PetSmart gives local shelters the opportunity to market, advertise, and adopt out their animals within the store. In many cases, PetSmart is an invaluable tool and resource for these local shelters to spread awareness for their adoption and foster programs. For example, since Gainesville Rabbit Rescue is such a small organization, it is difficult for them to inform the public about their services. However, PetSmart offers them the perfect platform to show the community their rabbits for adoption and demonstrate their passion for rabbits in need. I even got the amazing opportunity to meet and greet some of the rabbits, including Vesta, the Jersey Wooly Rabbit. We will discuss PetSmart's adoption services in fuller detail later on in this presentation. Now I would like to talk more about the types of products PetSmart offers its clients, its main pricing strategy, and what marketing aspects have led to the success of the company. I will also discuss some problems that their customers might face while shopping, as well as the store's main source of competition. As stated before, PetSmart is a department-style brick-and-mortar store. However, what makes PetSmart stand out from the rest is its title as the largest specialty pet retailer in the nation. Not only does PetSmart offer specialty pet items such as gourmet dog and cat food, but it also offers an array of unique services that other pet stores don't offer. For example, other amenities such as the pet hotel boarding facility, doggy smart day camp, in-store grooming salons, and a variety of digital and online resources all fall under the PetSmart name. That being said, PetSmart definitely uses its brand image as a resource in order to attract its loyal customers. Next, I'm going to talk to you about PetSmart's pricing strategy. While Marshall and I were walking through the store, we noticed that literally every single product was priced with a nine-cent ending. This tells us that PetSmart uses a psychological pricing strategy. For instance, they use the price tier effect strategy because a product sold at $1.99 feels more like it is being sold at the price of a dollar, when in reality it is actually closer to $2. They also use price ending strategies because something that ends with a 
9 is more closely associated with discounts and good value. PetSmart also targets price-sensitive customers. They provide many incentives such, such as rewards programs, coupon books, and many other discount options. Now I am going to briefly mention one downfall of PetSmart's selling platform. Many of their products are rather large and heavy, such as bags of dog food. This has deterred some of their clients who have opted for online retailers to send them the large and bulky items instead. Marsha will talk more about the impact of online retailers in the Chewy.com section of this presentation. Last but not least, I'd like to wrap up the PetSmart section of this presentation by talking about the amazing adoption campaigns that PetSmart has launched. I believe PetSmart's philanthropic activities are some of its greatest resources because it shows just how connected this store is to its community. To give you a little historical overview, the company began to feature fundraising and pet adoption events at their store locations in 1988. This, in turn, gave them a strategic advantage in the pet world because they showed their customers that they were philanthropists for animals' rights. In 1994, PetSmart created PetSmart Charities, Inc., an independent nonprofit organization committed to saving the lives of shelter animals. By 2014, PetSmart Charities had adopted out over 6 million animals. Their adoption campaigns eventually led to the creation of their vision statement in 2009, which states, to provide total lifetime care for every pet, every parent, every time, which we do by offering superior products, unmatched services, and superb customer service to our pet parents and their pets. PetSmart strategically positioned themselves as a service for not only the pets, but for the parents of the pets. In conclusion, their vision statement, along with their brand and image, and all of their resources, have led to PetSmart's huge success as a specialty pet retailer. Hi, I'm Marshall, and I'm going to be talking about Chewy.com for the rest of the video. Now before I get too in-depth about Chewy.com, I want to first point out that as of last year, Chewy.com was actually bought out by PetSmart. This seemed, at face value, to be a good idea. After all, Chewy was experiencing rapid growth, already accounting for 50% of online pet food market share as of 2017. PetSmart and other retailers, on the other hand, were stagnating, with only about 15% of total market share of pet food sales in 2017. It would make sense, therefore, for PetSmart to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. They would eliminate Chewy.com as a competitor and fill in a much needed gap in the online space. It would also help that the employees at Chewy were experienced with dealing with rapid growth and that Chewy had a devoted existing customer base. All that said, in the year that has passed since the buyout, both of then-CEOs Ryan Cohen and Michael Massey of Chewy and PetSmart, respectively, have stepped down from their roles. Michael Massey hadn't even named a successor. This is largely because Blue Buffalo Pet Products Incorporated had announced they would be selling their products to other retailers. They were estimated to have accounted for nearly 10% of PetSmart sales, and cited the buyout as a reason for the move, as they feared they were selling too much of their product to too few companies. Investors were also not pleased, as PetSmart's owner, BC Partners, could exploit a loophole that would allow them to keep revenues generated by Chewy.com for themselves by separating Chewy from PetSmart. Furthermore, Chewy loyalists have voiced concerns about a loss of authenticity as a result from the buyout and a potential decline in service quality. All that said, from an outsider's perspective, it is still too early to say whether the acquisition will turn out to be a success or an ill-advised decision. Chewy.com was founded in 2011 by CEO Ryan Cohen and CTO Michael Day after the two met in a Java chat room and failed in their initial endeavor of selling jewelry online. Their partnership arose when Cohen, then working in affiliate marketing, met Day in an effort to find a good programmer for an idea of his. Shortly after beginning their jewelry business, the two realized that they lacked a passion for jewelry vital to success, and sold all of their jewelry assets and started fresh. Using the money raised from this sale, as well as some investment with their own personal finances, the two bought as much pet supplies as they possibly could. When they launched Chewy, they made sure to implement a price match guarantee into their business model, a move which proved to make them more competitive in the early stages. Over time, venture capitalists contributed $236 million in capital by the end of 2013. 
Their mission of streamlining the pet supply shopping process through online ordering and doorstep delivery ultimately proved to be a compelling business model, with its simple appeal and good implementation. Taking a look at the Chewy.com website, you can observe a few things, many of which are very insightful. For one, there is virtually no mention of PetSmart to be found on the site, which is likely done in an effort to keep the Chewy brand as genuine as possible. Other signs of this can be found in the sort of language that they use. They refer to their customer service team as agents of awesomeness, and write tongue-in-cheek bits about how they always wear sandals because they're headquartered in Dana Beach, Florida, for example. While it might seem insignificant, such use of language does leave an impression. The main page goes to great lengths to emphasize how broad of a selection they have, touting their 1,000 plus brands in stock. Different products are categorized neatly, first by pet and then by product type. For instance, treats are distinguished from food, and cats are distinguished from dogs. They even have a section for customer favorites and top rated brands. All of which is to say that they put a great deal of importance on the customers and their input. They also recognize that customers will likely find other customers' recommendations more reliable, leveraging what they can from the effects of word-of-mouth marketing. Furthermore, they have tutorial and advice videos to help customers take care of their pets or to make the most of the products they offer and use. They give special attention to their shipping service as it is the cornerstone of their successful model and make sure to make it as attractive as possible through frequent promotions, like free 1-2 to two day shipping for orders totaling $49 or more, or applying a 20% discount to first-time auto-shipped orders. Individual auto-ship orders are also heavily promoted, with 5-10% to 10 discounts. Like PetSmart, they also heavily employ the use of odd-even pricing, to make products appear better and cheaper. Overall, Chewy.com's focus on customer service and accommodation is what drives their business, and as long as they focus on this core strength, they should be enjoying sustained success for the foreseeable future.